Hello and welcome. Today we're looking at the Cartesian plane. This is that plane that I'm speaking of. So, what is it? It's this thing. So it's got an x-axis, which is horizontal, goes across, and a y-axis, vertical, goes up and down. You'll find that there are positive values, which are bigger than zero, on the right-hand side and negative numbers on the left hand side so when you go to the right obviously you get bigger just like when you were learning when you were younger when you go to the right the number gets bigger when you go up the number gets bigger when you go down the number gets smaller so you can see here that this negative 15 is the smallest number out of all these numbers well it has the least value Next question, how do I say where objects or where the arrows are pointing? So the first thing you have to do is you look at the x-axis and then after that you look at the y-axis. So as we just said before, x is the across axis. So we'll do, let's do the purple one first. So we go across first, one, two, three, four, five it lines up it's 5 across so it's 5 to the right of 0 and it's 1 above 0 so it's 5 1 5 1 so its location is 5 1 easy so far excellent so we'll do this bluey green one next so we go across first until we get to it. So we're going across, 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 across. And it's pointing at where the 13 is. So it, it lines up with the 13, the edge of the arrow. So it's going to be 13. But because it is lower than 0, this y value, this y-axis value is going to be a negative number. So let's have a look at where it lines up. Follow the line back, and it's at a negative 2. So it is 13, negative 2. So as you can see here, the first value you write in is what x is, and the second number is what y is. So what, what could go wrong if you get that order wrong? Well, if we did 1, 5 instead of 5, 1, we would have to go to 1 first and then go up to 5. So if you were looking for something at 5, 1, but you went to 1, 5, well, you're nowhere near your target. You would not find, if the treasure was there, you would not find it. Let's look at the orange one next. So, X first. Let's see where it lines up. So it's at a negative 3 on the x-axis. So that's how far across it is. It's at negative 3. And how far up or down is it? Well, it looks like it's up, doesn't it? And it is at the 11. And the pink one. We're going to go across first till we line up with the pink. Across. So it's a negative 3. Across. And how far up or down is it? Well, it's down because it's lower than the 0. At minus 4. So minus 3, minus 4. Oops. So... I did one in each quadrant so you could see. So in here you've got a positive x and a positive y. In this quadrant you've got positive x but negative y. In this quadrant you've got negative x and negative y. And in this quadrant you have negative x but positive y. Fantastic and that's how you find where the coordinates are. So let's just do a random, let's quickly find where um, 1, 6 is. Oh, 1, 1, 6. Alright, let's see if you can beat me. I want you to get to negative 5, 7. Negative 5, 7. Negative 
Okay, so we have our table of values, the x values, ooh, x, and the y values. Ooh. So if you kind of spin this around sideways with the x is minus 3 and the y at 11, then that would you know look on the table down this way, minus 3 and whatever value that you know the formula dictates. So this one here, we've got 5 on the x, like this is 5 at the x. Okay, but we're going to find what kind of line this creates on the plane. So let's just use this formula to fill in the table of values. And we'll find the pattern pretty quickly too, I think. So this is whatever it is at y. So because x is 0, you're going 2 times 0, which is 0, minus 3. So that's a negative 3. 2 times 1, because x is 1, 2 times 1 minus 3 is a negative 1. So if you had, if you were at positive 2 and you went back 3, you'd go 1, 2, 3, and then you're at negative 1. So 2 times 2, because x is 2 in this, in this instance, minus 3. So that's the same as 4 minus 3, which is 1. And you can see it's going by twos, can't you? Just like we found out. So you went negative 3, negative 1, 1, so you're assuming it's going to go 3. Well, I mean, I probably should be going on the y-axis there, shouldn't I? <laughs> so it's going at, it's at negative 3, then it goes negative 1, and then 1, and then it should be 3, 5, 7, and so on, and so on, and so on. So you can probably get a vibe that it's going to be a diagonal line. And we're going to have a look at it now. So I'm going to get my line. I'm going to start it at 0, 3. So 0 across, oh sorry, negative 3. 0 across, negative 3. And I'm going to draw a line up to 5 on the x and 7 on the y. So there's 5 on the x axis, lines up with 7 on the y axis. I'll make it a bit thicker. So that means that all these coordinates should be along this line. So 0, negative 3, 0, negative 3. And then 1 across, negative 1 down. 1 across, negative 1 down. 2 and 1. 2, 1. So see, it's really coming along really nicely. So there's the 2 across and 1 up. And da 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 da, 5, 7. So 5 up to 7. So every time it goes across to the right one, it goes up 2. And that's what this 2 means here. It means every time it goes across one, it goes up 2. So this one underneath, it's a negative 3x. So if that went up by 2 every time it went to the right one, well that means this one should go, yeah, 3 down every time it goes to the right. One, and we'll fill in this table of values just so you get a better, better picture. So negative three times zero is still zero, plus two is two. Um, and you know what? So I don't have to worry about negatives. I'm just going to go across, and then we're going to see what the pattern looks like, and then we can just translate it backwards. So negative three times one is negative three plus 2 is negative 1. So if you had one lot of negative 3, one group of negative 3 would be negative 3. And then if I went plus 2, I'd go 1, 2, and I'd be at negative 1. So if I went 2 times negative 3, I'm at negative 6, plus 2 would give me negative four. So it should be going down by three each time. Two, negative one, negative four. So that should be negative seven. Let's make the assumption and double check. 
So negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, plus 2 takes us back up to negative 7. Excellent. So that looks like as it goes across, it's going down by 3, so let's do the opposite on the way back. So up by 3 if we go to the left, up by 3 if we go 1 to the left. So let's have a look at this. We're going to go negative 2, 8, and it should go past negative 1, 5, 0, 2, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 4, 3, negative 7. So see how this one is getting, the y's are getting bigger as it goes across? In this one, the y's are getting smaller as it goes across. So that tells me that it's going to go in a different direction. So we're going to start at negative 2, 8. So negative 2 and up, all the way up to 8. And I'm going to end it at, uh -oh. and I'm going to end it at 3, negative 7. So 3 on the x and then it's all the way down at negative 7. Alright, now let's make it a bit thicker, different colour. So let's just take one a random one. So 0, 2. So if it's 0 across, it should be going past the 2, and it does. What about the 2, negative 4? So 2 it should be lining up with negative 4. Look at that. Beautiful. And this pattern obviously goes, it can go for on forever. So we don't have to stop the line at the end of the table of values. That just gives us um, the vibe. It gives us the the pattern of where the line travels, the angle that, that the line's going. So I hope that helps. So now we've learnt how to read where a location is on the Cartesian plane. We've revisited how to look at how to finish our table of values. And we found out that this X and Y actually corresponds to the axes, axes, the axes on the Cartesian plane. So X is across and Y is up and down. So hopefully you enjoy the exercises and best of luck.